नमस्कार वेलकम टू दिस सेवेंथ ट्यूटोरियल एंड टुडे वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग हाउ टू कैलकुलेट ऑप्टिकल प्रॉपर्टीज विद क्वांटम एस्प्रेसो एंड आई विल शो यू द बेसिक मेथड्स फॉर कैलकुलेटिंग डिफरेंट इंपॉर्टेंट ऑप्टिकल प्रॉपर्टीज लाइक द जॉइंट डेंसिटी ऑफ स्टेट्स द डायलेक्ट्रिक फंक्शन द रियल एंड इमेजनरी पार्ट्स Uh, and the theoretical electron energy loss uh, spectra uh, now for calculating uh, these properties uh, in quantum espresso we have a very useful tool called uh, epsilon.x but uh, to start out you have to do a scf calculation of uh, certain material uh, and our example is uh, mos2 monolayer mos2 which we had done before in some Uh, previous tutorials as well so basically first we will start with a scf calculation of uh, mos2 and in this uh, folder i have uh, all the necessary files so you will see that uh, here i have a file mos2scf.in which will serve as my input uh, file for the scf calculation but here uh, some differences will be there from uh any uh, normal scf calculation in the sense that uh, i have to set the number of bands quite um, high uh, because i am running this on a desktop computer i am still keeping it uh, very small uh, as compared to what is required for calculating optical spectra i have just kept it 100 but uh, for uh, converged optical spectra you will need a much higher number i will uh, discuss that uh, A little while later, and second important point, uh, you have to uh, use this uh, non-conserving potentials like pseudo potentials like uh, this PBE, MT, FHI uh, for molybdenum and sulfur because uh, certain pseudo potentials, uh, some ultra soft uh, pseudo potentials may not work uh, well with uh, the calculation of optical spectra using the epsilon dot x package. now uh, another very important thing uh, in the input file uh, for the scf calculation will be that uh, we have to use the k points not in the automatic uh, setting like the monkhor spec k grid mesh like where you have three numbers n n n and then the shifts uh, b1 b2 b3 but in this format so uh, this is crystal b format and here we have how many number of k points i am going to have i am going to use four because uh, this is a hexagonal lattice and i will be doing the sampling uh, around the gamma mk gamma path so i have it gamma m k and gamma points i have written down and uh, the number of points for each segment now that also needs to be uh, converged uh, for uh, better uh, output of the spectra but i will just show you because this is a tutorial and uh, you just need to learn the uh, basics here when you are going to do a uh, full uh, scale uh, calculation for uh, publication or this kind of things you need a much uh, more powerful computer than a normal desktop so i'll just show you how to do the calculation it's pretty simple uh Like we had done before, most two dot scf in, and I can uh, show you the output because I have already uh, calculated and saved the results here. Because uh, not to make the tutorial too long, uh, because this kind of calculation takes some time, even with uh, this hundred uh, bands, and for. Uh, publication and this kind of things you will need to be using a uh, lot more bands so i'll just uh, let this calculation uh, run i already have the results saved so i can show you i can show you this uh, output file so it is a it's uh, right now the calculation is running so 
what I can do is I'll just stop this one and uh, because I already have uh, certain files written out I'll go directly to the calculations uh, with epsilon.x now uh, you have this uh, input files jdos.in so for running with epsilon x you need different kind of uh, uh, files input files for each of the calculations and uh, this one is for calculating the jdos and we have to give the prefix uh, pwsf.a where the output data are set smear type gauss this is basically plotting over the energy grid how it is going to plot um, then there is uh, the spectra this is uh, giving us the calculation EPS so EPS this type of calculation stands for uh, your uh, uh, computation of the epsilon i and epsilon r the real and imaginary part of the dielectric spectra and um, as well as uh, you will get the theoretical EELS uh, from this so to calculate these properties uh, we need to invoke uh, this epsilon dot x it comes bundled with quantum espresso so if you have espresso installed it will already be there in your system and uh, then you have to just give the input say I, first I will do the JDOS once my calculation is uh, SCF calculation is converged I have all the results then I will do this and it will give me some output file uh, this is uh, IEEE underflow error this is just a uh, very simple um, IO error sometimes uh, it can occur on some system but it does not mean that the calculation has uh, not been done correctly now you will see that uh, actually this will create a file jdos pwsf a dot dat and I can plot that file with this XM grace and I will get something uh, like this so this is the energy and this is the JDOS in arbitrary units this is energy in electron volts so I will uh, get my JDOS plot like this similarly for uh, computation of the dielectric function we will do the same we will invoke this epsilon dot x and I had named it spectra dot in the file uh, and I will put the spectra dot out so it will give me some calculation of the dielectric spectra this is one of the this is the imaginary part and the real part and uh, also I will get this theoretical ELS and this also comes out so all these uh, results are uh, available uh, if you you can export the data also this data file you can take it to uh, another system plot it with some other uh, plotting software as well but the thing uh, important thing here is that uh, these different uh, spectra I have been showing you these are uh, basically examples and these are not uh, 
properly converge results because uh, I am running this whole calculation on a desktop computer and the purpose of the tutorial is to introduce you uh, to the topic how to do the calculations. So one thing we need to understand that uh, for a converged optical spectra we need uh, some uh, much more uh, powerful computing uh, resources available and uh, for that what is important is uh, if you look at this uh, input file so you have uh, this n band 100 I had done and the calculation actually takes around 20 minutes with uh, this n band 100 uh, I have not run the calculation uh, waited for running the whole calculation I had already collected the results and showed you so the calculation will take around 20 minutes or so and uh, on on a desktop computer but uh, actually uh, you will be needing much higher than 500 or something even more uh, 1000 or some uh, more number of bands and uh, the interesting thing is that you have to test for the convergence of optical spectra for each material because uh, it will not look uh, uh, always not look like this that it will just drop down after a uh, certain point it uh, may increase or so you have to increase keep increasing the number of points the golden rule here is to keep increasing this number of point say by a step of 100 or something like that and uh, at each step you just uh, look at this uh, epsilon r or any of these uh, outputs and see if uh, there are significant changes in the spectra and uh, after you have reached a sufficient value uh, then you will see that even increasing the value by 10, 50, 100 or something like that uh, there will not be any uh, visible changes in the spectra so then you know that you have reached the convergence also um, another important thing would be to increase uh, this uh, number of sampling points uh, for the uh, k points that would also uh, help you get a better result and uh, uh, such calculations, uh, I am repeating again, they will demand more memory, uh, much more uh, processing power, uh, which is not available on uh, desktop computer. So do not try to increase these values to 500 or 1000, something like that and run on your desktop because it might end up uh, creating some problems in the system. So uh, this is very important and this uh, is just to show you how to do this kind of calculations uh, for um, optical spectra. Uh, with uh, quantum espresso and uh, most likely you will be uh, needing some high performance uh, com computing cluster or um, say for example a very powerful workstation to run this kind of calculations with the proper convergence criteria. So with that uh, we come to the end of uh, this part of our tutorial and um, make sure that you uh, subscribe to the channel and keep supporting the effort. Uh, like, share and subscribe and take care. Bye bye.